Hello, my name is Arlene Britton Owens, and today is May 20th, 2016. I'm here at the Boca History Museum, uh, the Old Town Hall. This speech is about my memories of Boca Tone in the 1960s. Now let's see, 1960, I was a recent member of the first eighth grade graduating class at the brand new Jason Mitchell Elementary School. It was named after one of the earliest pioneers. I had submitted Leroy Collins' name uh, in the contest because he was a governor, Florida governor I admired. All we ninth graders had to take a bus to Delray Junior High. And then in 10th grade, we went to Seacrest High School. Our school bus driver, Trudy Borchard, knew that the Boca Beach was our favorite place, so she took us up A1A to Delray. And that view of the ocean, first thing in the morning, every day made school so much better. Many kids went to Teen Town for dances, shooting pool, and doing community service. I went a few times, but not being a very good dancer, I especially liked the stroll. It was easy, and you didn't need a partner. But I had grown up in the Methodist Church, so I mostly hung out with the MYF bunch, Methodist Youth Fellowship. We got in a truck full of hay and did Christmas caroling. We went to camp in the Circle F Dude Ranch near Lake Wales. We had weekly meetings and fundraisers for trips and for projects. My MYF friend Skip Sheldfield also still lives here, and he and I both still go to First United Methodist Church. My dad, Denver Britton, had come to Boca in 1929 and found a, germ, a job with Herman von Holz after working on many area farms. Uh, it was that time, in Depression time, where people from Georgia came down here to work to send money home. Mr. Von Holtz was one of the men who came to own Floresta after Meisner went bust. The house we lived on was at 566 West Palmetto Park Road on the El Rio Canal on 40 acres of woods. The two-story house had originally been built to top the hall hill at Palmetto and 4th Avenue by the first settler, Mr. Rickards. The Long family had also lived there. As Mr. Von Holtz now owned it, my family got free housing. One day in the early 1940s, my parents and brother Jim had come home to find a letter on the door that said, this house must be moved or it will be demolished for the entrance and headquarters of the new Boca Raton Army Airfield. So my dad used the wood from one of the rooms to put the house back together after they moved it down the hill to the location where I grew up on the El Rio Canal. The uh, Christian Science Church is located there now. Mr. Von Holtz was German, and he didn't want to make waves, so the job was done immediately. Back then, we had a, a large pit where we'd burn our garbage. As a kid, my brother and I didn't just have to take out the garbage, we had to burn it. Later, we got garbage service and the big city dump. That, by the way, caught on fire a lot, too. Things I remember about the early 60s are hanging out at the pavilion, the old wooden inlet bridge, and up on the dunes where the Boca Beach Club is now. Those dunes were so popular that after hurricane, my dad would take me treasure hunting. All the sand blew away where people parked their cars, and there would be loose change laying everywhere that people had lost. We did lots of fishing and uh, diving along the rock wall at the inlet. Pop, as I like to call him, was a volunteer fireman and had driven Old Betsy when it was new. A siren on town hall alerted the volunteers to get to the station or to the fire. Uh, there were some paid firemen and also Chief John Ludwig, but mostly it was volunteers who got paid by the fire four dollars. Pop, uh, he's right here, my father did for Britain, uh, and was known as Backfire Britain because he was very good at stopping brush fires, which were very plentiful, and he was very good at using that technique. And also right here is Chief John Blue Once in high school, I had severe abdominal pain and had to go to the hospital. The only ambulance was the Career Funeral Home hearse. You really had to think positive on that ride. The driver was my MYF friend, Joe Jodry, who worked there part-time. In my senior year of 1963, I really wanted to go to the prom. 
We always got to have them in the great ballroom of the hotel and club, and I had never been to one. I'd just broken up with my boyfriend, and Joe had broken up with his girlfriend, so we decided to go together so we wouldn't miss it. That same year, Seacrest had been integrated with two young black girls, and Mr. Arthur Vining Davis, who owned the hotel and club, did not allow blacks as guests, only as workers. Even though the girls were not going to come to the prom, we could not have it in the ballroom. Instead, we were offered uh, an outdoor venue at the Boca Chon Cabana Club on the ocean just south of the inlet. Well, there was about a 40 mile an hour wind that night, so my group went in for a short time, had a picture taken, and then we all left to hang out at someone's house. We were kids. We still had fun. And uh, in this picture, this is Joe Jodry, and there I am. That's my prom picture. Some of these kids are from Boca, and some are from Delray. Um, my class of 63 consisted of all the high school students from Boca, Delray, and Boynton. Now, when I say all the high school students, of course, I mean all the white students, because the black kids went to Carver High in Delray. But because we had all the white students from Boca, Delray, and Boynton, and the class was still only 281 in number. After graduation, I went to University of Florida to study journalism, but it was short-lived. I was 18, and my mother died in the spring of 64. So I came home. My dad sold the house and the couple of acres he had inherited from Mrs. Von Holtz and moved back to Georgia. On my own, I lived in West Palm Beach a while, went to Palm Beach Community College for a while, before coming back to Boca. I lived for a while with my NYF leaders and then rented a room for my brother and his wife. I worked at Howard Johnson's. Now you can see it back here. There's Howard Johnson's and then there's the hotel behind it. A major gathering place at South Federal and Camino. To get back and forth, I became the first girl in town to buy a motorbike. It was a Suzuki with a top speed of 40 mile an hour. After a short while, other girls showed up at the dealer saying, I want a scooter like that Howard Johnson's waitress has. Here I was, a trendsetter. That job led to me marrying one of my regular customers in 1965 at the brand new sanctuary at, of the Methodist Church. By a, this is the 1925 version I went to as a small child that uh, sat on Royal Palm Road just south of Palmetto. But this, this came along in 1965. And so uh, I got married there and by age 20 I had a daughter that's why now, at age 70, I became a great-grandmother this year. That's what happens when you get married at young. When my daughter was 17 days old, I had my sister-in-law become her babysitter in order to go to work at Redmer Plastics Company on First Avenue, just south of Blaze Road. Mr. Redmer had invented the butterfly needle, the pinch clamp, and the blood filters that we sold to Abbott Laboratories. He also invented one of the very first TV remote controls, which we also made. I have friends still from that factory and spent 10 years there until it was closed in 1976 and moved to South Carolina. We didn't need air quality with huge PVC, polyvinyl chloride, injection machines and very little ventilation. I still suffer the consequences as many of my other coworkers do. It was at Redmer that I spent 10 years during a time when the color of your skin really set you apart. My dad's family was from Georgia, and his grandpa had, fit, had been a member of the Confederate Cavalry. There was bigotry all throughout the family, and I heard it growing up. But when I went to work at Redmer's, alongside women from Pearl City and Delray and Deerfield, I quickly decided to make my own mind up. It would stop with me and go no further. These were nice people, many of whom are still part of my life. Their rights and my rights should be the same, and I have supported that ever since. Of course, with President Obama in office now, relations are a little strained with my, some of my kin. But I just try to kill them with kindness, as Mom used to say. We had a lot of manufacturing here, 
even a colonial packing company, a meat smoking plant that smelled oh so good near Dixie and Blades. We all also bought the broken cookies from the cookie factory. It was the best deal in town. They were like chocolate on one side and all on the other with cream in the middle. And they sold the broken ones to the public. In 1964, we got a brand new Publix at Fifth Avenue and US wanted to go along with our Win Dixie. In the 1950s, we had to drive to Pompano to the Margaret Ann store to buy our groceries. So having stores here was super. In 1950, we had 992 residents. In 1960, we had 6,961. But by 1970, we had 28,056. The boom in the 60s came from IBM building here and Arvida developing here. Mr. Butts Farm gave way to Town Center Mall and West Boca. The old Army Air Base with the sports car and drag races, which were a lot of fun. They had, it was great. You could race cars because it was abandoned airfields. It was perfect. Uh, that gave way to Florida Atlantic University. Yes, I was there standing in the sands first with almost everyone in town when President Lyndon Johnson dedicated the university. The 1960s were a time of growing to adulthood for me, a time of turmoil for our country, and a time of rebirth for the sleepy little town that still lives in my heart. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And after seven decades here, I live in historic Spanish village. I have been in my present house for 47 years through two husbands and seven children. I sit and watch the boats and the birds and the manatees at Silver Palm Boat Park every day. And we have our own little community of friends there, daily visits with one another. We share our city with our winter visitors and are glad to see them come and help the economy. But then we take a deep breath after Easter when they all head north again. You can't just, you just can't be this place, my hometown. <laughs>